Okay, welcome to the fifth and final video in this series on accessing AS Biology. This is about Unit 4, Genes and Genetics, which one of your teachers will take on at the same time as the other takes on Unit 3. So this is the latter half of your Year 12 course. Okay, and this is on Genes, Genetics, Variation. It's all uh, sort of centered around the idea of variation at different levels, uh, genetic variation, species variation, um, biodiversity at the large level and ecosystem variation uh, at the very end. So this one it uh, relates more to unit two of the GCSE um, and there may be some bits in here which you've done very little of, right, especially if you've been out of the classroom for about six months as many people have. Okay, So um, again one last plug for the GCSE to A-level progression document which is on the AQA website. Uh, what you're going to uh, need to know before you turn up to this module is what and where DNA is. It's quite wordy, this topic, so there's key words. What's the difference between a gene, an allele, a locus, so on and so forth. Um, what DNA actually does, you may have done a little bit of this at GCSE. Meiosis, again, a little bit of GCSE. Evolution, natural selection and speciation, how to word answers correctly there. And then you did at GCSE a little bit of classification, which comes back round. At AS level. So let's dive straight in to the content we would expect you to know for day one of your AS level. Okay, so DNA basically have in your head a kind of picture of where it is. Okay, within the cell, there's a nucleus. Within the nucleus, there'll be chromosomes 46 in the case of humans. Okay, wrapped around those chromosomes like files in a filing cabinet, you've got the DNA double helix. Okay, that little uh, sort of flow diagram doesn't really get the scale difference, right? There's a much, much bigger scale difference between the two, but that's what you need to know. You're also going to need to know a lot more detail about the double helix and its structures, but if you have a quick look over what you did at GCSE in terms of nucleotides and base pairing, now I don't know if you will have covered that in great detail at GCSE. This is one of those bits where schools tend to um, suggest a little bit tactically that maybe you can do a little bit less on this or a little bit more. Certainly um, if you've been taught by me at GCSE you should definitely know a fair bit about DNA. Okay, um, Other uh, schools and teachers may vary. Okay, So previous knowledge in terms of this as well, this is sort of one lesson at uh, GCSE level and for us it's around mock time and around art exam time so you may well have not known a huge amount about this what DNA does okay DNA codes for protein and the GCSE at the highest level goes into this idea of the triplet code the idea that three bases spell out one amino acid the order of those amino acids is a protein okay now that's about as far as you go at GCSE and you may not have got that far so it's worth looking at the GCSE level material on this because that is where we start at AS level okay so you also will have covered meiosis in greater or lesser detail is what I mean about being a wordy topic mitosis versus meiosis and so on and so forth uh, the process of making gametes okay which are sex cells so the idea that meiosis is as per mitosis so this bit here is very similar uh, and then you end up with one division and then a second division to end up with four so-called haploid or half cells from one. Now there are some subtle differences that we bring in at AS level that you may not have covered at uh, GCSE. Right? If you've got a rough idea of what happens in meiosis compared to mitosis, great. Okay, And also the purpose. We're adding variation and use in sexual reproduction. Okay, So it mixes up the genes, adds variation and spurs on evolution. On which note... You are expected to remember the basic process of natural selection and evolution because it's from that point that we start and move on in AS level. The idea that mutations occur, which creates variety in a population, leads to competition. The individuals with the best suited alleles, not genes. We've all got the same genes. Everyone's got some hair colour genes, some eye colour genes. It's the versions of those genes that vary. Okay, So it's alleles of genes, not just genes. They uh, survive better depending on their environment, and if the environment changes, it might favour different alleles. So they pass on their alleles and they um, and breed. They succeed over time. Um, unhelpful alleles die out. Okay, and you may have been given loads of different examples of GCSEs: peppered moths, grey squirrels, Darwin's finches, which are over here. 
right? And uh, that change in as a change in the environment or a split in the population, and you eventually get new species. That's the process of speciation, which you also will have covered at GCSE, and leads to sort of evolutionary tree diagrams like this one, where you've got an ancestral species, there's a split here, a split here, a split here, a split here, so on and so forth. And that's Darwin's famous tree of life. Okay. Now, of course, humans only turned up and started to try and work out what was going on quite near the end. So we tried to come along and apply a system of understanding this, which is another thing we'd like you to remember from GCSE, which was the classification topic. Okay. So you will have learned these words, domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species, in that order. Okay. They are still relevant at AS level. Okay. The idea that the two uh, the two name, two word name, the so-called binomial system, right? This Homo sapiens, but that's our Latin name, and it is a, uh, you know, Homo is our genus, and sapiens is our species. And if you've got another organism that's very closely related to it, might be in the same uh, genus. We don't. The last surviving one was Homo neanderthalus or Neanderthal man, which died out maybe ten thousand years ago or so. Okay, so. That is the classification system. You did learn it. This is what's called traditional Linnaean taxonomy, and it's what we sort of stick to at AS level. You would also have learned maybe a little bit about three domain theory and Carl Vos. That doesn't come back at AS level. So really, for the majority of your functional taxonomy and classification, we use Linnaean taxonomy. So going away and revising that is a good idea. OK, so that's basically what we need you to know before you turn up okay it's all stuff you've covered at GCSE but we need you to remember it okay so the next thing you do is not another one of these videos is turn up in September knowing what to expect and succeeding at your AS level I wish you all the very best of luck